Okay, we're live and back for more. Welcome to CIS 75, my name is Irvin. Um, this is a prep class to the CompTIA uh, Security Plus exam. Because it is a prep for that and for the real world, this is not going to be your typical class where you have to remember a bunch of stuff and regurgitate it later. It's gonna be a lot of hands-on, uh, but the awesome thing about the way that we do things is you are more than welcome and actually encouraged to collaborate with each other and help each other out. Uh, yeah, I think future professionals. This, this course, I get that it's gonna to be tough because there's a lot of work to do, but you don't have to do it alone because in cyber, we work together. The class is structured like this. You got all your lecture notes in one place. That's where I read from. Uh, you got all the lab work that you find every week and any reviews down at the bottom. It's, it's been divided into uh, 13 modules. So that means we do a module a week unless the module overview says it's going to take two weeks to get through one, but most of them should be done within a week. And then from there on, the last four weeks of class are spent preparing for the test itself. Any questions on the format of the class? Okay. My policy when it comes to assignments is very simple. There is a due date for everything, but I understand life happens. So I'm not gonna punish you because life happened. Just turn it in when you can, as long as it's before that date. Once May 18, 1159 hits, no assignment is accepted. So you have the full 16 weeks to get anything and everything in without a penalty. Once we hit that time and date, the do until date, that's when nothing is accepted. Are there any questions on that? And I'll remind you, as, as the semester goes on, especially in the second half, I'll remind you of the due date. I'll even put a countdown that'll let you know as we get closer to that time and day. But anything and everything is accepted up until that point for no penalty. Um, everybody, before I jump into that, everybody should be logging on to Discord. So in Canvas, there is a Discord link. If you click on that, that will take you into um, our Discord server where all the collaboration will happen. Under assigned course, you need to click on Cabrillo CI 75 on the penguin, this penguin here. When you click on this penguin, you'll receive the proper role and then you'll be able to talk to your fellow classmates right here. This is where all the collaboration will happen. And yes, it is being watched by the stat bot. So one, the announcements channel has important things like this Zoom link, if you ever lose it the YouTube channel for all the recordings. Uh, you know what, this is not happening anymore, so that'll go away. Uh, the link to redeem your GCP credit. When I have that, I'll let everybody know and, and you'll be able to get your own uh, GCP credit. And then the, the note about Discord. 
that the more you talk, the more you collaborate with your classmates, the more points you'll get. The less you talk, the less you are active, the less points you get. Any questions? Pick the penguin for this class, 75. This penguin down here. Cool. Oh, um, for Cabrillo students, the bookstore let me know that you don't have to buy this book. You can get it for free. So if you bought it, go get your money back. But they uh, made it available for Cabrillo students. Right? The last thing I want to point out is uh, another policy item of this class. And that is if you take and pass the security plus exam, you get an automatic A. Because that, again, that's the whole point of this class is to prepare you for that certification. So if you get it, if you sign up before class is over, before uh, May 18, you sign up, you take and you pass that certification exam, you're, you get a perfect day. You don't have to submit anything. And remember that at the at starting week 13, it's all going to be prep for that exam. So you could use that time to prepare yourself and go and take it. And uh, you you submit to me the the I know what it looks like when it says you pass. So you send me the proof that that you uh, pass the exam. It doesn't matter what you get on it as long as you pass it. So as long as you pass that certification exam, you get a perfect A, you don't have to submit anything, you're done. And that just rings true throughout the whole semester. So if you, um, for example, because why not? For example, way down at the bottom is this, the practice. Take it enough times, you feel yourself comfortable and ready go take it whenever. Again, as long as you show me that you successfully passed that certification exam, you, you're good. You're done with the class. Any questions? Excellent. So this week is going to be more of a refresher. You all should have networking knowledge and you all should have Linux knowledge. So this will be a quick overview. If you are not familiar with either or both, this is going to be a crash course. You will need to do some research later. You will need to uh, build up on those fundamentals because it's pretty hard to get into security pretty hard to do cybersecurity and not have a full, at, at least a understanding of how do devices talk to one another and how Linux works. So again, this is gonna be fast. This is not gonna be a, a three hour long lecture. Um, what's the internet? Very simply, it's a network of networks. 
it's like our road infrastructure, connecting houses to each other by street avenues, boulevards, highways, and freeways. That's all that it is. It's, it's just a network of networks connecting your home network to your ISP's network that connects to another ISP network and so on and so forth. Whereas a house or business would be a source or destination location, hosts uh, are any device that connects to a network. That could be a printer, a cell phone, a laptop, a gaming console, a smart device. Hosts fall into two main categories. That is the server, which provides resources to other hosts like websites, online gaming, shopping, email or the clients to access those resources. Intermediary devices are those that facilitate the communication between the host within the local network or across the internet, like switches, routers, and wireless access points. Real quick check, does, is anybody not familiar at all with networking? Anybody completely new to networking? Okay. Data is sent over the wire, over fiber optic, over the air, over microwave, over infrared in the form of binaries, zeros and ones. I have a tool in the notes that you can play with. We have our local area networks, the group of computers and networks that are connected together within the same building or same room, same facility, the wide area network connecting several local area networks and could be limited to an enterprise like a corporation or accessible to the public. Your home gateway, otherwise known as an integrated router, combines three jobs. Connects your inside network with the internet, acting as a modem. Connects computers together with cables to make a wired LAN acting as a switch. And connects wireless devices to the LAN acting as a router. In larger networks, there's a separate device who acts as the access point. Routers are the backbone of the internet. They route information by connecting different networks together. As I said, the internet is a network of networks allowing devices to communicate all over the world. A quick refresher on IP addresses. They act just like a postal address that you input on Google or Apple Maps to get to directions, your time, traffic data. All devices have to have them that are internet connected, and that's either in IPv4 or IPv6. V4 looks like that. V6 looks like that, using hexadecimal. One second. Okay, this thing, you all should have like the back of your hand, should know it really well. A different take on it is how do you secure these? How do you secure these seven layers? Because you may understand how they work and you may be able to recite them but how do you secure them? That is a interview question that you should be thinking about in the next couple of weeks is how, is how do you answer that question? How do you secure physical? How do you secure data link? How do you secure network? How to secure transport? How do you secure session? How to secure presentation and application?
for example, really quick, how do you secure physical? Let's say we're talking about uh, cat, cat six cable. Anybody, anybody, how do you secure cat six cable? Yeah, put it in conduit. How do you secure application? No, firewalls is not application. Although it could be, but you gotta be more specific. Because firewall would sit in level in uh, layer three. Yeah, things like SSL. So just have that in mind that as you go through that, this, that's an interview question. Moving right along into uh, Linux. Uh, before I do that, any networking questions? Okay, I see none. And moving on ahead. Your operating system is the most important software that runs on a computing device. It manages all other software and hardware, coordinating applications, CPU usage, storage access, networking, and everything else just to make sure everything functions properly. The kernel is the main component of an OS and the core interface between the computer's hardware and its applications. It is a program that communicates between the hardware and software. It's named the kernel because it's like a seed inside a hard shell. It exists within the OS and controls all the major functions. It manages all those system resources and is super important. Linux itself is a collaborative open source environment and lets you modify it any way you want. Comes in quite the variety. And you can get a picture as to where, where that stands, but it's pretty wild how uh, crazy, how many versions there are, kind of like ice cream flavors. In Linux, yeah, here's, what, here's that picture. In Linux, everything is a file or a folder. That's super important thing to know by the way, that stems from a common location called the root, normally signified by that sign. For example, all devices like mouse, keyboard, and drives are in the slash dev folder. In this way, there's a universal hierarchy for everything. So it does mean that you can send something to a printer in dev, or you can send a command to a mouse in dev because it's a file or a folder. When referring to a file in a specific location, like a user's home folder, you would use the syntax slash home slash user and then picture.jpg, meaning the file called picture.jpg is in the root folder, home folder, user folder. The Linux shell is a special application which provides an interface to the user to access and control the OS. It's named a shell because it's the layer outside the kernel. 
It accepts human readable commands from the user and converts them into something that the kernel can understand. You normally access it through the command line interface. In Linux and Mac OS, you use the program called terminal. In Windows, it's the command prompt. You have a number of human readable commands that are already built into execute. Some of them are really powerful. You should be familiar with commands like pwd, print working directory, ls to list contents in the directory, cd to change directory, cat to concatenate a file or to print a file, less to scroll through a long file, ln a symbolic link, apt install to install an application using a package manager or chmod to set or change permissions to a file. If you're unfamiliar with those commands and you're like, what do I do? How do I learn what these commands do and what and all that? There is a resource in the notes. This guy, SS64, absolute favorite of mine. Highly suggest if you haven't played with Linux to bookmark this. And even if you do use Linux, bookmark it anyway. I have it bookmarked. Whenever I'm trying to work on a command and I don't remember exactly what to do, you could totally just click on like CP, for example. It tells you what it is, tells you how to use it, gives you everything and a couple of examples. Great resource to have. If you've never played with it, this is the week to do it. Because again, you're going to need to have that skill when uh, we begin doing all the other labs. There's a game called Bash Crawl that you can run on Linux. Help you, it'll help you um, solidify your command line skills. The instructions are in the lecture notes. on what to do in a Linux terminal and to begin playing the game. There is some extra credit if you can, if you can prove to me that you solved the game. Just a little FYI. Any questions? Okay, seeing no questions, here's what's on your to-do list this week. You will go into TryHackMe and create an account. Click on that join now, fill in the blank, and jump on in. It is $8 a month for students. Now to access all the rooms, you'll need to either run your own Kali Linux machine in the cloud or uh, connect via OpenVPN if you have your own Kali or Parrot or whatever else you wanna run. I prefer the cloud one only because it's up in the cloud and I don't have to spend any resources locally and I already paid the eight bucks a month. So give me stuff for free, but that's just me. I'll leave that up to you. Your work is to complete the pre-security learning path. So as you go through uh, and complete all the rooms, this will all turn to green and you complete the entire thing. 
And all that you do is submit a, um, you submit the PDF certificate that, that they give you when you're done with it and just say, hey, I finished. You are more than welcome to work together, to collaborate and help each other out. You are not cheating. It is not plagiarism. It is not frowned upon. It is encouraged to work together. Because that's what we do in security. We work together. Any questions on the work this week? Okay, then seeing none.